Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. AMD just finished their Computex 2021 event, and it somewhat disappointed in ways, but it also really surprised in others. Ultimately, AMD announced four things, including one that's going to completely shake up the industry. So yeah, let's get right to it. Starting things off, AMD announced the RX 6000 Mobile Series GPUs. That includes the RX 6800M, 6700M, and 6600M. Now, I'll go ahead and say right off the bat that, surprisingly, they didn't announce the 6600 or 6600 XT desktop GPUs, yet they did announce the mobile variant. So I certainly thought that, that was a bit odd, but here we are. Starting things off, we have the 6800M, which comes with 40 compute units. And I do think that's really important because 40 compute units is exactly what's in the 6700 XT GPU. So I think it really goes to show just how much they have to kind of bring things down to be good enough to fit in mobile. Obviously they do still call it the 6800M, but just know that when you're getting a mobile processor, it's not going to be as good, not just not as fast, but even not as many cores as the desktop counterpart. Now, with that said, I don't have it right here, but they did have a slide comparing it to the 3080, and it did seem to win out in most games that they showed, though it did lose in one or two. But either way, one of the most interesting things that I saw was actually them comparing it with battery life. You can see right here, the 6800M seems to get, depending on the game, significantly higher battery performance. With that said, do keep in mind that, uh, you know, Resident Evil Village, I do know, was made fairly closely with AMD, and I believe Dirt 5 as well, because I know Dirt 5, at least in like a beta that they did earlier on, was pretty quick to support uh, AMD's 6000 series ray tracing. So I'm fairly sure that they work pretty close with AMD as well, but regardless, it is a pretty impressive feat. Moving on, we have the RX 6700M, which comes with 36 compute units, a game clock of 2300, 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and really quickly, I do want to go back the 6800M comes with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and 96 megabyte infinity cache and a 2300 megahertz game clock. So back to this, we still maintain the same 2300 megahertz game clock, yet the compute units did go down a little bit and the memory went down a little bit as well. Either way, uh, I will say that they primarily focused here on 1440p, but they also focused 1440p here as well, promising 100 FPS. Now, moving on to the 6600M, I will say that they focused, you can see right here, epic 1080p gaming. Either way, clearly this is focused on 1080p gaming. It does get a drop in compute units, of course. They're not too bad. Uh, down to 28 from 36 and then it has slightly slower 2177 game clock and 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and a 32 megabyte infinity cache. So these are fairly impressive, although I really would suggest waiting for third party reviews, trying out battery life, trying out, you know, all of that stuff compared to Nvidia's mobile lineup. So take everything as far as how great it is with a bit of a grain of salt here, just make sure that you look out for those reviews as they become available. And speaking of availability, make sure to pick up the GamerMeld Paper Launch t-shirt at store.gamermeld.com. Simply put, if you're sick and tired of AMD and Nvidia releasing GPUs only to be sold out seconds later or psh, before you can even refresh it properly to actually see it in stock, they go out of stock. These certainly feel like paper launches. You can argue that technically they did sell a ton of GPUs, but at the end of the day, it still feels that way when you can't just go on Newegg six months later and buy a GPU. And the next big release, or not so much release, but ultimately just a tease, but I think it tells us some pretty big stuff, is AMD's 3D chiplet technology. Now, in this case, they specifically, and this is why I think it's a big tease of something to come, they specifically chose to show this with Zen 3, and they even showed it in the 5900X. Basically, what it does is they were able to add significantly more cash for a massive bandwidth improvement over current uh, chiplet technologies. They were 
Effectively, while in the exact same package, Lisa Su even showed the 5900X without the IHS and it pretty much looked identical. So because they really showed these off with the 5000 series of CPUs and the fact that they even showed off gaming performance with this 3D chiplet prototype, you can see right here that there is at least a bit of a difference, not too much, but enough, at least in my opinion, to release an XT CPU. Not only that, but I believe she said that they're actually going to be um, mass producing these starting at the end of this year, which really tells me, see, we pretty well knew that, you know, this Zen 3 Plus thing was either not a thing or it was canceled. Either way, we know that Intel is going to be releasing Alder Lake at the end of the year, so AMD had to deliver something. And so far, rumors are suggesting that AMD is going to be announcing Ryzen 6000 sometime next year year so they obviously had to release something and without at least some kind of jump or a you know something better on the node whether it's you know six nanometers or something like that though that is where the zen 3 plus rumors don't seem to be accurate anymore or at least it has been canceled this could be the perfect solution so in my opinion, it does look like this is what they're going to use to combat Intel's Alder Lake until they can release Zen 4. And as you can see, while it's not a significant difference, it is a difference. And honestly, from what I saw, I will say that I do believe it's a better difference than it was with the 3000 XT. So it's at least a little bit of something to get excited about. With that said, there's a really big thing to get excited about because AMD officially announced that they are releasing their 5000G desktop APUs to the DIY market, specifically the 5600G and 5700G. Now, for those who don't know, the 4000 series was relegated only to system builders, so the DIY market never got a chance to buy one unless, of course, you bought it from a system builder or something like that. But anyway, it was not available specifically to the DIY market. And when AMD released these CPUs not long ago and they weren't available to the DIY market, I was pretty concerned, but it looks like they have done it. You can see right here that we are finally going to get an eight core 16 thread APU. And not only that, but it's priced pretty well at $359. Honestly, compared to Intel, this really isn't bad, at least compared to their 11,000 series of CPUs. With that said, as you can see, availability won't be until August, so there is going to be a little bit of a gap before they're finally released. If you're someone who's still trying to look for a GPU around this time, this could be a pretty decent buy just to kind of hold you over. With that said, it is still using Vega, but from what AMD showed, it's definitely much faster than Intel's current Rocket Lake CPU's integrated GPU. So definitely impressed there. And really quickly, I did not realize that I actually had this slide here. You can see that it is a significant improvement over Intel's CPUs. So if you are having you know, an issue trying to get a GPU, an iGPU could be an okay bet to hold you over. And especially whenever it comes to gaming, you can see some pretty massive differences. But forget all of that, because the biggest news, at least in my opinion, is AMD finally announced the Fidelity FX Super Resolution. They're what they're calling Super Resolution, which is basically their competitor to NVIDIA's DLSS. And the really big thing here, well, <laughs> Let me go ahead and talk performance. Right here, you can see that you get an average of two times the performance for quality settings. This is a little bit disheartening. Uh, 10 game studios and engines, um, not that great, but over 100 GPUs and CPUs for the support. If you saw my video not too long ago where I actually discussed this, the really big thing is the fact that this is supported and I guess I'll go ahead and just kind of show you what they're showing. I do believe it looked a little bit worse um, than NVIDIA's DLSS, but that doesn't matter, at least in my opinion, because this flat out is supported across tons of devices. It shows the 6,000, 
5000, RX 500, RX Vega series, and video cards actually confirmed uh, that it will even, if you see right here, it specifically says, and CPUs. Apparently, this is also going to work on AMD's iGPUs. So, going right back here, when this does come out, you should have some pretty great performance. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this includes it. I doubt it. That would be fairly misleading if you ask me. But the simple fact is that this is perfect timing, at least if you ask me. You can see availability June 22nd, so it is coming fairly soon. But the number one thing is the fact that this is going to make older GPUs just more relevant, more powerful, better. We are talking apparently average two times faster versus 4K native. Of course, lots of things, you know, we didn't we do need to do some testing, pixel peeping, things like that. But unlike Nvidia's DLSS, where it only supports their newest GPUs, this will support tons of GPUs and Hold on, we're not done. It even supports NVIDIA GPUs. Now, I was a little bit on the fence about how I felt about this, at least, I guess you could say for AMD as a company, I was just kind of like thinking, why? You know, I don't see why they would really want to do that, but I think I get it. See, even if theirs is slightly worse, with the fact that you have AMD's GPUs and things like, oh, I don't know, the new consoles, developers are almost definitely going to be developing with this in mind. And if it supports NVIDIA's GPUs, let's pretend that theirs are 10, 20% better, you know, a little bit better performance, maybe even a little bit nicer looking. Developers are going to have a really hard time justifying putting in the extra work. And from what we heard uh, from the same leaker who basically suggested that this was going to be happening in a recent video that I did where they suggested that it's going to be, you know, a lot of older GPUs. They also said that it would be easier to implement than DLSS. So with the fact that consoles are going to have it, so developers are almost certainly going to have to develop for this no matter what, and it supports NVIDIA GPUs, even if you get 10 to 15% better performance, there's not a big reason for developers to specifically develop for DLSS. Basically, this could completely kill DLSS. I don't want to say that definitively right now. NVIDIA simply has a ton of money that they're absolutely pouring into this, but this could be a major hurdle for NVIDIA. They may have to open up DLSS themselves. Either way, what's so great about this is that even if it isn't as good as DLSS, tons of GPUs, even iGPUs, support it. So for anyone who's having a hard time buying a GPU, this could hold you over until they finally become available. I mean, we're talking upwards of two times the performance. So really impressed with this. You can see right here, four different quality modes. Um, but yeah, it really is quite impressive. Once again, it's going to be available June 22nd. So not too long. I'm almost certainly going to be doing quite a bit of testing on this. So I can come back, let you know, hey, is it comparable? Is it worth it on older GPUs? Things like that. But from what we're hearing today, I'm definitely excited. So anyway, with all of that rambling, I do know I messed up a ton. So I'm going to be doing a lot of editing, trying to fix this, make it look halfway decent. But uh, I had a lot of things that I really had going around in my mind that I wanted to get out. So hopefully you did like the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Definitely make sure to subscribe. And as always, have a great day.